I am. I've had a lot of time between the last discourse and this one, mostly because of the gig we did and because of tiredness, illness. So I think it's about a week since my last discourse. And again, a lot have, has happened. And being that a lot has happened, there is a lot to talk about. I was going to go straight into my feelings about resonance as opposed to amplification. But I'm going to uh, delay that because in the recent days, we've been with people who talk too much. I find that people who talk too much are tiresome. Even when they have tons to say and they're brilliant and have done amazing things and have unique ideas. I just get tired. I get tired of their lack of interest in me, their lack of interest in anything outside of their own perspective, their own holographic reality. I believe in our holographic reality, there's faith there, but I get in a lot of information about my holographic reality by asking questions of you, asking questions of everybody and listening to everything. I would say that is one of the main parts of a walkabout that, are, that is hidden from most people, is how much I listen to the world as I'm doing the walkabout. It's not that I'm just playing through the world and ignoring everything, it's that I'm reacting to the world and playing what I, my reaction to the world. People who talk too much don't listen. Their inability to listen is, in a sense, shows how ignorant they are, even if they're telling us tons of interesting things about life. Because ignorance comes from a lack of integration with the world lack of listening, a lack of paying attention. The things a blabbermouth is talking about is usually about themselves and not about the world in relation to themselves, even if they are saying so. Because a person who really gets that understanding is a really good listener as well as can talk when they need to. I consider myself to be that. Is it a boast? I can't say it is, I, can't, I can almost say it may and was when I was younger a fault because I didn't speak up about things. I still don't speak up enough about things. When somebody is talking about something I will let them talk and listen to them. Very deeply, I will listen. And I will not talk or interject or call them on a inconsistency. Mostly I listen. I listen to their inconsistencies. I listen to their faults and their errors. I listen to their wisdom and their ideas and their innovations. 
I take it all in and I incorporate it into my holographic reality. They, on the other hand, don't do that. I actually don't even know how they get information because they talk so much they don't listen. How do they receive information? So it, it makes me doubt their information and their wisdom and their knowledge. We have been in our life, the sweetie and I, we have been around people who talk too much. We have been all around a lot of people like that. Straight off the bat, I can remember them. I can remember them because it's very uncomfortable when somebody starts going and is unimpededly talkative. They don't listen to your inquiries. They don't listen to your, could I ask you another question? Could I, um, they just talk. So I wonder, are you one of those people? And how do you know if you talk too much. I don't believe that any of these people knew that. Or if somebody told them that, they considered them rude and they couldn't care. They feel there's an ego largeness in it. There's a major ego that they believe that what they are saying, and even if they're dominating the environment with their talk, they are, what are they are saying is much more important than anybody else's ideas, innovations, wisdom. So they just take it over. And as I said, they don't seem to care whether anybody has ideas, innovations, or wisdom. They ignore them. That's very different from me. It comes along with my feelings about mistakes. Um, it comes along with my feelings about watching others do things. In experiencing a beginner doing something that I am very good at and I have done many times, I could speak of cooking that way. A person, let us say a person who has just learned to make omelets is just big on themselves and they make, uh, they're making an omelet. I don't stop them and say, I've been making omelets for more than you have been alive and I'll do it. You, you don't know what you're doing yet. I never do that. What I do is I watch them make the omelet and see if they're doing something in a intuitive way that I could learn from. This is true about everything that I experience in life, including the violin, including singing, including dancing. Everything that I'm extremely good at, I always observe everyone around me and watch their method. Many times, they don't offer much. People are very limited in their ability to evolve they kind of stall out. And people who talk too much stall. They stall in their self-congratulatory expression. By talking too much, they impede anybody else who has ideas that they may learn from. Again, I don't really even know how they learn. So it's difficult when I am around those people who talk too much, especially from the fact that I just listen. I can't help it. I, the sweetie will tell somebody to, it will tell somebody to be quiet, but I don't do that. It also causes a person to talk too much to talk even more because they have a listener who is really listening and they know it 
and it gives them an opportunity to really talk and talk and talk and more talk. There's an irony there. So, a growth that I could po probably open up to is trying to tell somebody to be quiet or you're talking too much or some kind of statement that would let that person know that they're talking too much. Gurdjieff was very good at telling people that they talk too much. But he was a gruff, macho kind of masculine figure and his me method was extremely assaulting, let us say. Assaulting is a little bit too strong, but I will say it that way. And I appreciate his way of doing that because I know that he didn't like people who talked too much. People would come to see him and speak to him and gain from his wisdom and in the end they just blabbed away and he just said, you're talking too much, be quiet. I don't think it's exactly how he did it, but he did it somewhat like that. Um, and he was very harsh. I'm not. That kind of goes along with my, as some people might describe, my wimpy kind of behavior and attitude in, in social environments. I just let people do whatever they're doing and I watch and observe quietly. I experience an, in, an immense amount of learning by observing people. A long time ago, I would say 10 years, that may not be that long, but 10 years ago, I did a performance. And actually now to think about it, my sweetie was not with me, so it was longer than that. It was, let us say it's more than 20, it's about 20 years ago which brings up a very strange feeling in me. 20 years ago, I did a performance in Marin County, California. And it was a lovely performance. It, I, was, uh, I was on a stage, which I don't like. I don't like stages. I like, I like the Greek way of of performance. I don't like the European get on top of a thing and stand over people type of performance. I like to be in the bottom of a pit on a flat surface. This was always the Greeks way and this was always the way of the oracles. But that said, I was on a stage. I did a performance. At that time, I was using a box. I may have been electric foot drum. May have been. I don't think it was a uh, acoustic foot drum. And I was dancing, singing, carrying on, doing my thing. And then once the performance was finished, I had a question and answer from people and people asked me questions about what I did and I answered them. At one point, a woman asked me a question. Well, it was not a question actually. She made a statement that was question-like and her statement was, resonance is the same as amplification, wouldn't you say? This is a big issue for me. I wanted very much to discuss that and answer that 
But for some reason I was distracted and I don't remember what distracted me, but I was distracted from getting into that dialectic. What's interesting about that is that it was 20 years ago and I still regret not talking about that, not getting into the dialectic, not countering that statement which was placed as a question, but was a statement. In thinking about it, I would say that I was not as vehemently counter amplification as I was and I became. I was already starting to notice a problem, but I didn't notice the problem as much as I did later. And thus it became even more of an issue. So to all of you who say that amplification is the same as resonance, I say that is incorrect. They are not the same. Amplification is an increase in something. It is a in increase of something. Resonance is a reflection of something. That is then fed back, let us say. So that when I look in the mirror, I see me and it comes back to me there is not, I am increased in size uh, upon looking at myself or something is amplified about me that comes back. It is me, but it's reflected. That is resonance. I feel that resonance is the ultimate method of expressing sound. Resonance is the purest, the most honest way of expressing sound to other, to yourself, to ourselves, to myself, and expanding outward to an audience to a group of people, to a universe. Amplification is a false and inflated way of expressing sound to, the, to myself, to you, to a group of people, to an audience, to the universe. The implications are very large, and so I'm going to go at them. Because this woman believes that when she hears a resonant voice, for instance, I go into a cave and I sing, she thinks that's amplified. There is a quality to it that could be perceived as amplification, and that is where the correspondence breaks down. What is happening in resonance is that the sound that is purely and honestly coming from me comes from me and hits a structure of some sort. Um, in this case, there is a column, there is a wall, there is a window behind me, um, there is a tree, all the things and real things that are within my vision and around me reflect that sound back to me. That is resonance. When I'm in a cave and I sing and I play the violin, I sing, play the violin, 
the cave, the walls of the cave reflect that sound back to me. The experience of that reflection from the walls, which add their own pockets and different types of textures that the wall has to the sound, the wall then embellishes more than amplifies the sound and returns it to me. That, that reflection is resonance. It is, I seek that. I seek that because I express and the world reflects it back to me and I experience a joy in it and a joy that I I can only say is better and more blissful more joyful than any way of experiencing my sound so I'm always on the lookout for resonant areas where the air, the structures that I'm that are around me reflect that sound that I have expressed back to me so purely and beautifully. In an open space in a field, the sound that I express moves out in the field and travels a long way and it, the reflections that may come back are too dim to be able to return to me. So I experience I, am, I experience almost a loneliness because I can't hear myself very well. The sounds that I have expressed, I hear from myself alone and I don't hear a tree re reflecting it back. I don't hear a wall. I don't hear a um, anything reflecting that back. Instead, it just goes and drifts on forever. And as I said, those structures that may reflect the sound are too far back. So that the, the, the sound reflects from, let's say there is a mile away, there is a wall that receives my sound and reflects it back. It is too dim, too soft for me to perceive it well. And it's a long time for the sound travels, it takes a certain amount of time to reach the wall and then takes a certain amount of time to get back to me. It is way, way later in time than I can really perceive. So when I'm in a cave, when I'm in a beautiful room or a house or hall, where the, and the, the definition of what the resonance is and how beautiful it is and how pure it is, is called acoustics. So the acoustics of the environment are pure, that the structure itself, the place that, we, uh, that I am in, is designed in a beautiful way to offer reflections that are very embellished in a beautiful way, let us say. It is this that is so wonderful. And that is something I seek in all places. One of the ways that I attempt and try to find a resonant space, acoustically viable and beautiful space, is I will do a call in that space. It is a gentle call. It is a beautiful call, very simple. I do, I go, just from doing that, I can tell 
what the resonance and the acoustic value of the space is. That's the sweetie will sometimes speak of it. Ooh, just like that. Simple, isn't it? And I can hear so clearly the quality of a space. I can hear the elaborate decorations. I can hear the wall. I can hear the surface of the wall. I can hear everything just with that sound. That's important. That's very, very different from amplification. That is what resonance is. I consider resonance to be one of the most important aspects of finding a space that supports my sound expression in the most warm and uh, ecstatic way possible. Hello. Without that resonance, the space is difficult. It causes great... It causes me to work harder. It causes me to sing more because I cannot tell what I'm doing. I can't hear myself as well. So my sound does not return to me in that way. But a resonant space I don't have to work as hard because the, my voice and my violin return to me with, as if hands have said, here, this is what you sound like. And so I am grateful to a space that has such resonance. The bathroom in our apartment has really nice resonance. It's a bit too compressed, so it, so I can't sing past a certain volume without the resonance just beating hard on my ears and hurting me. That's pretty much what is illustrated by the volume I can use in my expression. So what is amplification then? Amplification is when a device is used to increase the sound of something. So a, an amplifi amplification is a amplifier, is a, it is a device. So amplification is not a resonant room. The room does not amplify. The room reflects the sound that is already used. Whereas an amplifier increases that sound through some sort of device. Everybody in music at this time Everybody uses amplifiers now. I actually don't experience anybody who doesn't. Going to Zest on Tuesday last week, I experienced a trumpeter not using the microphone and the amplifier. So he was not necessarily amplified because his instrument is already loud, so he ne doesn't necessarily need to use the amplifier. But everybody else does. All the singers use microphones. All of the instrumentalists use microphones or are plugged into an amplifying device. To me, it's a kind of disease because resonance shows how your sound is, how your pure sound is honestly. Whereas an amplifier, you turn a knob and you can make it louder. 
if you are incapable of being loud, if you are incapable of full volume, if you can't really express yourself in a crescendo and in a dramatic way, you use a knob and you turn that up. However, to be able to be volume, voluminous, to be able to express yourself dramatically, to be able to be so big in your sound and so small and soft and have this dynamic range is the definition of being a fully expressive instrumentalist or musician or sound expressor. To not do that shows a lack of ability, a lack of talent. And a lot of mu um, sound expressors inspired by all the music in the past want to be sound expressors but don't have the talent so they use an amplifier to make themselves bigger so they then look like they are expressing sound in a very powerful way but they are not people musicians sound expressors all of those people who use amplifiers to express sound and cannot do that themselves without the amplifier are not capable and have, do not have the talent to be sound expressors. They are false. They are liars. They are dishonest. I am extremely hard on those of you who use microphones to express your sound. I want to say to you, put down the microphone, let's really hear what you can do. I want to hear what you can do. When you put a microphone in front of you and you turn up the volume and you put effects on, that is not you. That is something else. That is something you're using and amplifying yourself to make yourself appear bigger, better, and more complex, more dramatic than you are capable of. If you can do that, then do it without the microphone and all the effects. And then I will allow you to do that and say, yes, you have talent. But then why use that amplifier? The only thing is because you are egoistic and you need the amplifier to reach more people than you can. That is another thing you do with an amplifier. You use it to reach more people than you are capable of. Recently, I heard of a show where Billy Joel and Sting were, were performing in a venue. They were singing on stage. Both of them are a little older than I am. And I know they are incapable vocally of reaching an auditorium of the size they were singing. But they had amplification, and it made it seem to the audience as if they could sing these hits that they created a long time ago to this entire audience so loud that people screamed and applauded to them. It's a lie, it's dishonest, and it causes a disjoint in our civilization and our society that makes people think that this is honesty. It's dishonesty. I say to you, Sting, I say to you, Billy Joel, if you are really capable of this sound, do it without the amplification. I want to see you do it. I want you to blow me away the way you do this audience by me standing in front of you and I want you to drown me out when I sing with you. I want you to show me that you have the vocal power and that talent to drown me out. I guarantee and I bet that you cannot. I bet that any of you who have and use this amplification to pump yourselves up, to show, to impress people, to impress your audience, to, tell, to make people think you're so big and powerful in your production and in your presence and in your, in your 
sound expression, I dare you to do the same thing without your microphone, without your amplifiers, without your effects, and show me that you really have the talent to do that. I don't believe you do. That is why resonance is different from amplification. Resonance is truly your talent. If you can resonate, then you are being honestly truly that. You are doing it. There's nothing in your way. There's a wall, but that's not increasing you. It's reflecting you back to yourself. Whereas amplification takes what you do and makes it bigger, so big that you blow out ears who are listening to you. You hurt and injure people as you're using this power. You destroy things. Of course, I like being feisty. I am a feisty being. That's why I do walkabouts. I do it because I am unamplified and I affect people without a microphone.